Welcome to this video, which is on what do I need to know about GNSS? So this is mostly meant for people that are not professional geodesists. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the lingo we use and some things about files. Uh, four main constellations. The one uh, we talk about the most is GPS, which is operated by the United States, but there's also GLONASS, uh, Galileo, and Beidou and all produce useful signals for GNSSIR. Uh, frequencies, this is a, <clears throat> a lingo that I will use, and um, I apologize if it's confusing to the newcomers, but basically people talk about the different frequencies in GPS as L1 and L2. Uh, there's an older version of L2, which people often call L2P, the new versions L2C, and there is of course, for the more recent satellites, L5. Uh, GLONASS uses the same names, L1 and L2, but that is uh, different frequencies. And Galileo has lots as well. Again, they all start with L. And Beidou also has uh, frequencies, which at least within RINEX uh, are being called L2, L6, and L7. There are a lot of details, a lot of details in how these signals are made, and that is not covered in this class. Um, uh, so for your, for the purposes of what you might need to know, uh, if you ever were to look in a file, and if you look in the results files, you'll also see this. Constellations all use the same names for their satellites, one through 33. Uh, they tend to use a character in front of them to say which constellation they're in. And I don't like to combine characters and numbers. So what I've done is make them all numbers. If it's a GPS satellite, it's just 1 to 33. Uh, GLONASS, I've added 100. Galileo, I've added 200. And Beidou, I've added 300. For reflectometry, uh, sure, some receivers are better than others. Um, I can think of at least two that have uh, inaccurate SNR data, large systematic errors. Either they've mislabeled the SNR data with the wrong frequency or it's just wrong. I'm not going to out them here, but I will tell you privately who they are. I would also just want to answer this future question from someone in the class who always gets up at the end of his seminar and says, but geodetic antennas all suppress reflected signals, suppress multipath. That's why the antennas are so expensive. Um, they all attempt to do that. It doesn't mean they succeed, and they certainly don't succeed at the low elevation angles that we're going to use. Some useful information. Uh, RINEX, that's the word, which is an acronym that is used to describe the file formats. Uh, it's an ASCII format, and it has a header uh, followed by timestamp observation records. So the observation records are typically in like year, month, day, hour, minute, second type uh, timestamp. Uh, I primarily support RINEX 2.11. The observables are defined in the header. Now, a geodesist is going to use the carrier phase data, and it's confusing because they'll talk about that as the L1 and the L2 data. Um, just so you know, don't, don't worry about that. We don't care about the carrier phase data. But sometimes, if a geodesist gives you their RINEX files, sometimes they'll give you files without the data we actually want. So I just want to... if. I don't want you going back to your geodesist friend and complaining too much because those data might be useful for them, just not for you. So I also support the modern version of RINEX, which is called RINEX 3. But uh, just for simplicity's sake and well, to make my life easier, I immediately convert those files to RINEX 2. And I can do that thanks to the people at GFZ who have a converter. So if you're going to get into the RINEX world, you're eventually going to learn about the Hadanaka format. Uh, this is a compression standard only used by geodesists. Uh, there's standard executables used to uncompress them, and you're asked to download those when you uh, look at the details of the documentation. Now, there are a few requirements for your GPS or GNSS files. You have to have receiver coordinates in the header. 
Uh, that is because you're going to use those coordinates to calculate the vector between the satellite and the receiver, and that's the vector that's used to compute the elevation angle that is used to estimate reflector height. You also have to have SNR data in the file, and that's why I told you that a geodesist might not have those in his or her file. Uh, most archives, most archives operated by scientists, geodesists use SNR data to provide it. And uh, if they're not there, you need to do something about it. The observables are called S1, S2, S5, S7, S8, and so on. I have made a little utility that you can use to check to see if your files are compliant called check underscore Rhinex. Just a general statement, modern GPS signals are better than legacy GPS signals. So that's why I told you about them. Uh, as to whether, how, how could you, a beginner, tell that those signals are in your Rhinex file? There's really no way for you to tell. I could explain it to you, but it's, it's not trivial for a newcomer. So this is just me running check underscore Rhinex on some files. In this particular case here, the receiver coordinates do exist. Uh, there are 11 observables. You can see they've got all these L observables, C observables, P observables, and S1, S2, S5. SNR data are found, but in this particular case, no SNR observables are in the file. If the receiver coordinates weren't there or they were meaningless, i.e. someone set it to be at the center of the Earth, that would be returned as well. So what if you don't have what you need in the file? It's missing something. Well, that was a choice by whomever made your Rhinex file. So if someone else did that for you, ask them to remake them. If you made the files, then you should uh, look into your translator program and, and modify the inputs to output the SNR data. Uh, similarly, if there aren't receiver coordinates in your file, that was a choice. And you should go back to your translation program and figure out how to add them. If you have lots of files without coordinates in them, you can use the TQC code to add them to your files. Um, you don't have to go crazy and make them centimeter level. Within 100 meters is sufficient. So where are these files? Well, I've put in instructions for 10 open international geodetic archives. Uh, how do you find out which ones are supported? Well, go on GitHub or look at Rhinex to SNR-H. The caveat is generally the code's going to look for the data files collected by geodesists, and you may not be able to use them for GNSSIR. And that's because they're either 15 or 30 second sample rates. That restricts the reflector heights you can look at. Uh, second bit of news, the community is moving toward Rhinex 3. They almost always have better data than uh, Rhinex 2 just because uh, the SNR data are available. Um, but we're not quite to the point yet where people are always providing Rhinex 3. So again, if you want high rate GNSS data, you're going to have to use the dash rate high. That being said, I don't have as many of those coded up as I do for the low rate data. Uh, we really need some help from other people to add archives. So I also want to warn you that Rhinex SNR translates files if you have some, but it will delete them. Uh, Rhinex files take up a lot of space, and I kind of grew up in the age of smaller disks, and there's no reason for you to keep them if you're doing GNSSIR. Uh, unless you own them or something, and yes, then I think you should keep a copy. But if you're going to be downloading files from an archive, that the only job of that archive is to provide data with you, let them do it. Delete the files after you've used what you need. Uh, I would also point out that we're not the place to go for streaming data. Uh, they don't use the Rhinex format, so we can't translate them. Uh, but certainly, if someone were to write some kind of buffer system, we could add it um, later. Uh, another comment. I've written these scripts using the archives as they exist today. I 
they use anonymous FTP and that's just the way they are. I know a lot of people don't like that, but that's how they're accessed. And um, as archives remove that, uh, I've been trying to keep up with it, uh, but eventually those, those anonymous FTP uh, logons will go away. There are a lot of different compression styles and it is frustrating, um, but Rhinex files started being created in the 1990s. And so, you know, Jesus didn't exist then uh, and Hadanaka was developed in some sense, I think, because these other compressions didn't exist then. So as for adding, adding archives, if you would like a data archive added, I am willing to add it, but please, if you could write a function in Python on GitHub, look at the ones we have and uh, make your own that looks like that. So it has similar inputs. Hopefully all you have to do is change the uh, address and maybe some directories and we'll do our best to add it. The only thing I, I would emphasize is it has to be an open archive. I will not add archives that require passwords. Um, that wouldn't be uh, right for the archive and also I want to emphasize open data um, as for a common good. Okay, let me stop there.